years ago, a study was done for our provincial, the provincial government with regards to specifically the issue of sea level rise. And maps came out of that, projecting forward what sea level, uh, what storm surges will be doing. <coughs> and every, there are zones all the way around New Brunswick, from the Bay of Chaleur, along the Gulf of St. Lawrence, and all the way through to the Bay of Fundy. And you can go and look, and you can see that, that in the case of, for example, one section, I, I haven't looked at them all, but I randomly pulled up one, and it was the area around St. John. And what is a once in a hundred year event of around now, or in fact, it goes back to 2010. What was a once in a hundred year event by 2030, I think is a once in a 25 year event. Yeah, but the other one I think that's truly scary from a real time is storm surges. So not only with the rising sea level increase as the frequency of these storm surges uh, increases, um, one of the things that scares me is the reporter saying, well, we're lucky it was low tide. <laughs> yes. Right? Well, if it's the right time of the month with the moon and it's high tide, that storm surge could have been, well, you know, Water Street was taken out. Three streets up were taken out as well. And these are real. I mean, that's like playing Russian roulette or with with uh, with, the, with the tides when a storm surge comes. I, I agree with Carl. The carbon pricing has to be transparent and revenue neutral, uh, regardless of, of, of uh, who's running the province. Yeah. Uh, so it shouldn't even be a political issue, should it? Absolutely not. No, no. It should be whoever whoever's in power. That's it's just a given. That's that's a foundation for whatever the initiative is shaped like. Mm -hmm. um, so carbon pricing definitely has to be in place. I think one of the things. So that that's a that's a financial mechanism or a tool. I think what we could spend more time looking at is the potential positive impact on the New Brunswick economy as a result of doing this as well. Not just from uh, things like uh, you know improving energy efficiency in homes that that, that in itself will spur you know, will spur economic activity, but probably more important than that is export potential. What can we export? We are a small province. We're seven hundred fifty thousand people. North America is close to forty four hundred million people now alone. So what is it we can do here to export? Because realistically, we are a small market. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I, I do think a, a, a price on carbon is something that we need to look at seriously. You know, that's a market-based solution. Market-based is mm -hmm. typically the type of solution that parties to the right of the spectrum would embrace and love, right? So, so it seems to me, no matter how things shake down here in the province, putting a price on carbon should be one of the first steps. And then all of a sudden, here's, here's I think, uh, a potential huge benefit to doing that. A number of years ago, I worked in the provincial metalworking industry when I was working with the province. And I would go around to visit different metalworking shops around the province, and I was amazed at the fact that in virtually every one of them, there was a genius out back in the shop who could make anything. I would echo and that. I started calling yeah. them backyard geniuses, and it made me wonder, how come we have so many smart people in this province that we don't have more patents and intellectual property and that type of thing? That's, a, that's another issue, of course. <laughs> but when all of a sudden we put a price on carbon and we make conservation and living sustainable, st sustainable real for everyone, I have a feeling we will leverage the geniuses all around this province to start finding solutions. Mm -hmm.